Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today I am going to talk about the reason why I think the GameCube is one of the most underrated consoles of all time. The reason I call it underrated is because it didn't perform well commercially compared to the N64, the SNES and the NES. It wasn't a critical underperformance like the Virtual Boy, but the GameCube sold 21 million units compared to Nintendo's prior consoles. But that's not the full reason the GameCube is an underrated console. I'm going to talk about the historical context, the features that made it stand out as a console, its library of games, and how the GameCube had a long-term influence on the Nintendo community despite it not performing as well commercially compared to the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Starting off with the history of the GameCube, the Nintendo GameCube originally launched on September the 14th, 2001 in Japan and November the 18th, 2001 in North America. Europe didn't get it until May the 3rd, 2002. At the time the GameCube came out, the gaming console market was in the middle of the 6th generation console war, which consisted of the PlayStation 2, the original Xbox, and the Nintendo GameCube. Nintendo's previous console, the Nintendo 64, which released in 1996, did have competition with the PlayStation 1, but the GameCube, Nintendo's goal, was to recapture the Nintendo 64's legacy with unique features from other consoles alongside a strong lineup of games. At the time the GameCube released, the PlayStation 2 was dominating the market. Given that the PlayStation 2 had a huge library of games and even had multimedia capabilities, given that the PlayStation 2 was also a DVD player, which did expand to Blu-ray and 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray as generations passed. The Xbox, in other hand, was Microsoft's entrance to the console market, with superior hardware to the GameCube and online gaming support through Xbox Live. Even if I find the design of the controller a bit odd, despite the competition, between the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, the GameCube did its own thing in terms of design choices. But how did the GameCube perform in sales? The GameCube sold 21 million units worldwide, which is less than other Nintendo consoles, and comparing it to other consoles on the market, the PlayStation 2 sold 155 million units and held the crown for the best-selling console of all time and still holds the crown as of this recording and the original Xbox sold 24 million units. But at the end of the day, it was Microsoft's first console, so we can't really dub it a failure from how many units it sold. And even if the GameCube was last place in this round of the console wars in terms of sales but the gamecube does have a memorable lineup of games that a majority of them are still considered masterpieces to this day now with the historical stuff out of the way how's the console itself and this is what this section is for the unique features that the gamecube had one of the features that stood out to me with the GameCube is the design of the controller, which was unique compared to the PlayStation 2 and Xbox compared to button layout. And comparing the GameCube controller to the Nintendo 64 controller, the GameCube controller replaced the C buttons with the C stick, which acts as a second analog stick. The A, B, X and Y buttons had unusual positioning since the A button was in the middle, but at the end of the day, it's the 2000s. Controller design wasn't the same back then compared to today. 
and the GameCube controller also included pressure sensitive shoulder buttons similar to the DualSense controller in the PlayStation 5 but without the adaptive trigger part. Another aspect I wanted to talk about is the mini discs. These discs which only stored 1.5 gigabytes which not only provided a unique look for the GameCube but also made loading times faster compared to DVDs which competitors may use and this was a unique move at the time since it is a unique format that sets the GameCube apart from the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Although the storage was limited compared to other formats, developers compressed their games onto these discs without affecting the quality of the games themselves. The GameCube also had a variety of accessories, with the one of note being the Game Boy Player. An accessory that you can attach to the bottom of the GameCube, allowing users to play games from the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, as long as they have the Game Boy Player disc inside the GameCube. And the cartridge of the game you want to play is inserted. The only console that's ever done this is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System with the Super Game Boy. Because no other console has done this until 2012 for Sony with the PlayStation TV. And if you think of it that way, the Game Boy Player was like the Nintendo Switch of the 2000s. The only difference is you need both a Game Boy Advance and a GameCube with a Game Boy Player in it to actually get it to work. When talking about the game library for the GameCube, the library is near perfect. Even with a few 7 out of 10 games in there, like Luigi's Mansion, one and Super Mario Sunshine, we do have a great lineup of games to offer with the GameCube. Starting off with Super Smash Bros. Melee, the best selling GameCube game, brought a bunch of Nintendo characters into one fighting game, and this one became essential when playing at a 2000s theme party and is best played competitively. Metroid Prime is also another brilliant game that expanded beyond the GameCube, and into a trilogy with a fourth one on the way in 2025. And for a GameCube game, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker probably has some of the best graphics on the console, since the game uses cell shaded graphics. Mario Kart Double Dash being the most underrated Mario Kart game. I do take back what I said about Mario Kart Double Dash in a Mario Kart ranking I did a few years back, I still need to update it. Back to it. Mario Kart Double Dash being the most underrated Mario Kart game, which has a variety of expressive tracks to race on thanks to its cartoonish detail, which makes the game more fun. Resident Evil 4 looks great for a GameCube game. Even though this is one I still need to play, it is one of the most important games in the survival horror genre due to over-shoulder gameplay. Pikmin, a strategy game where players manage an army of plant-like creatures called Pikmin, which can be used to solve puzzles and gather resources. And for the time it was released, Pikmin was a unique game. Animal Crossing made its start on the GameCube, and even if it doesn't have many features as current Animal Crossing games, it's a fun start to the series, where you can customise your house and village while interacting with your neighbours, who are of course animals. F-Zero GX, the best F-Zero game, is probably one of the best racing games you can buy for the GameCube, thanks to its tracks and high-speed gameplay. And this has become a fan favourite from the GameCube, which I'm hoping makes its return. And finally, Luigi's Mansion. While not my favourite to come out of the GameCube's library, but for the time it came out, it looks great visually, even though the controls don't hold up today. <clears throat> even if 
I didn't have time to talk about all of them, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. The GameCube has an amazing library of games which should be locked back on since it kickstarted a few popular franchises like Metroid Prime, Animal Crossing, Pikmin, and Luigi's Mansion. And even not all games from the GameCube turn into franchises, sadly Kirby Air Ride didn't. The Wii U and the Virtual Boy have been flops, but the GameCube was a flop that was actually impactful thanks to its library. And finally, to end the video, we have the long-term influence. Even if the Nintendo GameCube did not perform well in sales, it has a well-deserved legacy which does expand beyond the console's life on market. Look at the amount of innovations it has made, which expand to not just future consoles, but consoles outside of Nintendo as well. For example, the WaveBird controller was one of the first mainstream wireless controllers to ever exist, and now all modern gaming platforms use it. The GameCube's connectivity with the Game Boy Advance was a great thing to have at the time, and a concept that Nintendo would fully expand on with the Nintendo Switch, becoming the first handheld home console hybrid. And even if the GameCube as a console did not sell well, the library has had an impact and influence on modern game design. Titles like Super Smash Bros. Melee still dominate the competitive gaming community, and many GameCube games have had remakes and re-releases on future consoles, so people who weren't around when the GameCube was available can play. And even if consoles like the NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, and the Nintendo Wii sold more than the GameCube, the GameCube deserves its place in Nintendo's history books as the most underrated console to date. So guys, what did you think of my explanation for why the GameCube is underrated? And I want to hear from you. What is your favorite GameCube game? And if you have a console you think is underrated, let me know what it is in the comments. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.